Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector. I'm super excited to have Nicolas Dorier, uh, coder at BTC Pay Server, open source project, as you guys know. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic project, fantastic product they're developing with an incredible rate of speed. Um, so uh, to make it short, I see the monetary evolution, the critical adoption rate or mass adoption. I see that in the merchant adoption. When merchants, once merchants, um, you know, whatever obstacles there are, whatever learning curves there is, whatever educational uh, challenges there are, eventually they will open up. They will open up exponentially um, and learn and educate themselves and hopefully get, you know, um, receive a much better support, help, guidance, and especially user experience, user interface, user friendliness, really break down things, the terminology, the, the operability, and everything else. So yeah, this, so I want to know, you know, how Nicola Durier stands all this, what's his position, what's, what is his vision, uh, what kind of uh, possibilities are there, you know, to make it more easy, to make it uh, facilitate the smooth transition right into a bitcoin denominated um circular localized economies at least as a you know as a transition to a alternative um bitcoin denominated infrastructure where customers can pay whatever by online bitcoin online uh payment or lightning but you know it should be you know it should answer it should resolve all the practical issues and questions there are like immediacy uh, instantaneous privacy anonymity uh hopefully we're going to get there so yeah without further ado this is my talk with nicole they yeah really excited about this let me know your questions and please uh follow me give it a like sub subscribe please follow me on twitter it would help me tremendously thank you so much for support and for listening and here you go thank you uh, sorry for being late. Uh, I mean, no problem. Late. Welcome to the for show. For having forgotten. <laughs> I know. I'm. I. I can only imagine. It must be a life of a of a coder. It must be pretty <laughs> exhausting, right? So, so Nicola Dorier, <laughs> thank you so much for coming to my show. Um, really appreciate it. I've I've seen or uh, listened to you to some of the interviews you gave. Uh, I think the last one. I think you you were on the Steve Levera show. So look, um, Nicola. Um, I'm a, you know, I'm an educator. I see myself as an educator, podcaster, and uh, I really want to break down things uh, like from, uh, I know you're a coder, so I'm not a techie, I'm not a coder. So um, I want to really go down the rabbit hole of um, when it comes to, you know, practical questions. Like, uh, first of all, can you briefly give a little bit of description about yourself? Like, what's your path to Bitcoin? How'd you how'd you how'd you land in in BTC Pay Server as a coder? And you know, what's your ethos, your vision? Thanks. Yeah, so I started um, like I think 2014. It was a bit after MTGOX. Uh, I saw that MTGOX is done is gone, but I saw that Bitcoin was not was still surviving. So I, it was a bit intriguing to me because I thought that Bitcoin was a startup money. So I was thinking if the startup is down, may like why is it still working? Uh, why, why is it still working? And so that's all. Like by 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 searching on this, I, I found out uh, that it's it's really uh, it, there is really something. And on top of it, like in France, I got I got lots of problems with banks as well. Uh, where I got refused like six times in a row, and like uh, when you you can you can force them to take you when you get a number of rejection because anyway if you, they don't accept you you cannot even pay your taxes because the tax people don't accept uh, cash so <laughs> the seniorage so yeah. like uh, they, you you need you need a you need a bank account so like uh, you, you can force them to take you but if you force them they are not very happy with you so they provide you no service basically you need to go to the branch. Uh, every single time you want to do an operation, even even if it's just seeing your balance, basically. So yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, like yeah, it's how I got caught, and um, I wanted to know more technically about it. There was not too much technical documentation at the time, so 
I did it by reading the source code of uh, Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin J and like doing my own library that's called nBitcoin. And uh, yeah, after, after I did nBitcoin, basically like one or two years later, I started contributing a little bit to Bitcoin Core, not too much, but like it, it told me a lot about uh, Linux environment de development, for example. Uh, then there was um, there was this fa famous uh, B2X uh, attack on the network that com comes on, and it's when I started BTC Pay basically. But like everything I built, I started building on Bitcoin basically, and it was N Bitcoin, and everything that I'm building since I first started Bitcoin is always on top of what I'm doing. So like as time passed, there is a huge stack coming up, and uh, the the more time pass, the more user oriented become what I'm doing, basically. Let me ask you, because I'm curious before, before this question goes under, um, I read an article just recently, I think it was by Vlad Kostea. Is he, that's his name, Vlad? Uh, Vlad uh, it was a short article about time locks. And you were in 2015 involved in the development of the of the relative, it's called, I don't know what it is, but maybe you can explain yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, so OpCSV basically, is, um, so I was not, I, I'm not the one that kind of invented it. It was, uh, I think, Mark uh, Friedenbach that, that developed it at the, uh, at the beginning. Then he did a pull request and this pull request was not getting too much attention. Uh, but I, I, I was kind of motivated to work on because like we needed it for lining. And uh, there was a BTC drag uh, that kind of helped me like setting up my first development environment for Bitcoin. So for example, one of my first steps was compiling the Bitcoin code, source code. This step alone like took me one full day because I didn't know anything about uh, Linux or anything. So like it kind of helped me getting it started and also like helped me to collaborate more effectively on open source project because I didn't know how to make really good requests. I didn't know how to rewrite history to make it clean so that uh, there is more chance to be uh, you know, merged. Uh, and basically, yeah, I was just working on this, like adding tests, uh, rewriting the code, like finding some bugs, uh, right, uh, like uh, collaborating on the, on the Bitcoin improvement proposal as well. But uh, yeah, it was it was my first step basically where I, where I started it. So essentially, it uh, was sort of a smart contracts on the Bitcoin protocol. Is that like well, a layman? Uh, well, I, 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 like uh, when you are using line lining network, you're using smart contracts. Uh, mm -hmm. we just don't call it like the, at the end of exactly. the day, just a contract that is self enforced. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's just a concept that was needed for uh, lining to work. And uh, yeah, so it was very important. All right. Um, Nicola, let's let's talk about BTC Pay Server. So w can you give like a overview, like what does, who uses BTC Pay Server? Pay server. Who's your, who's the target? It's an open source uh, project. I, I find it great what you guys are doing. I mean, within shortest time, you've developed. I mean, amazing stuff. But can you give like a, a you know bigger picture? Of what does it do? What are features, functions? What, you know, what is the practical usage uh, so, of BTC Pay Server? So it started. So the end goal of this project basically is to get people running their own node. Uh, so we we got this. Uh, B2X attack by the, uh, you know, that was going on. And even if Bitcoin network is decentralized by itself, the problem is that if there is not good tooling or like tooling that are not too difficult technically to, to, uh, that, to, to, to use, then people <clears throat> decide to rely on third party services. And if, even if you have a decentralized network, if everybody is using the same service to access Bitcoin, like it doesn't matter like what the Bitcoin blockchain says, at the end of the day, there's this people, this person you will relate to that will become the source of truth rather than the blockchain itself. <coughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, I saw, I saw that coming on uh, during B2X, uh, for example, like B, uh, BitPay that was telling their merchant that there was an upgrade to Bitcoin. 
like basically misleading them to to become the source of truth on the protocol basically so yeah it's it's i think it it was kind of dangerous situations um so when i did btc pay my my, my immediate goal so I was quite fan of BitPay basically for, I, I was using them for a long time. And uh, also to my customers and like people I was consulting with, I was advising them use BitPay. And uh, when this happened, basically like, if you go to them and they say, oh, BitPay will switch. They will say, okay, well, what should I do? I cannot do anything because anyway, I'm using their stuff. So my, my idea was, okay, I will develop uh, open source solution that is replicating exactly their API so that you can switch from BitPay to my uh, solution without the need of uh, changing anything of your code. Basically, you just point to a different server and just work. And uh, it, it's how it started, basically. So it was more oriented for merchant because it's more merchant that was using BitPay. But uh, at the end of the day, the end goal is always like to get people running nodes and uh, to, to decrease this kind of uh, attack vector on the network. Right. You see, I mean, I mean, I'm the average, I consider myself as the average user, uh, maybe a noob with a little bit more experience. I had once a Casa 2 uh, hardware, you know, I had it up and running. It took me a few days and then I turned it because I saw myself, you know, I need a little bit more features and functions. So I turned it uh, by buying a, you know, the premium software of my node and turned it into a full node, right? So the only button that is not active on this dashboard of my node is the, the BTC pay server because I don't need it. But, uh, you know, since I talked to my girlfriend, she has a business, you know, she has a company, she works, you know, literally every day. She has no time for, you know, for uh, really going deep down the rabbit hole or, or you know, uh, struggling with the technical issues. And I, you know, it took me more than a week until, you know, a lot of people helped me and I had to, you know, call the router provider. I'm just saying, you know, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do also with this podcast is like to translate this knowledge for, for the average user, whether it be users or customers or, or, or merchants, yeah, for example, so, such as my girlfriend, you know? Yeah. So, so basically, yeah, it's a, when you are using Bitcoin in any way, you need to learn some things. Like you cannot just keep your banking mindset and just say, okay, it should work like a bank. It cannot, like whatever we do technically, it's impossible that we make it work like a bank. Like it's impossible. So it means that people need, there is this learning curve to, to, to engage. And the only way to, for them to, engage this learning curve is if they have somebody that can teach them that they know and that they trust, or if they really need it because they have no other way. Uh, so in BTC pay server, basically when you install BTC pay server, you can decide to share your instance with somebody. So like you, you don't have to be the only merchant of your, on your BTC pay server. Like you can very well host a BTC pay server and say to your friend and family, okay, if you want, if you need a, somewhere where to get get a checkout page for your server or for, for your store or whatever you can just use my instance of btc pay server and then i can gu guide you through and like uh, answer your questions and like doing this kind of things for you so even if like it doesn't reach the stage where uh, even my grandmother like run a full node I want at least reach the stage where there is not a few actor in the in the community that have like uh, ninety percent of the users that just blindly follow them. So anything that even even you know if, if it go a little bit on the other side, it's still okay. Uh, so yeah. What are the predominant questions when you or you know or what kind of feedback or questions do you get from merchants? Because I'm gonna tell you what my girlfriend she said. You know I have no problem. You know but she she would love to offer an alternative, you know opt-in Bitcoin uh, in payment infrastructure to the to to her customers and give her even whatever a couple of percentage of discount. But she said it's really important for her accounting system. I don't know what you would call it, accounting cashier system. Uh, you know, the fear because of uh, accounting and tax reasons. So it needs to be, uh, you know, converted instantaneously into fiat. Uh, what's your yeah. approach to that? So, 
So we have solutions to convert instant play in, in fiat, but it's still uh, kind of uh, experimental. It's called the BTC transmuter. And the idea is that when you receive money on your wallet, the wallet immediately sell it, sell some stock of your Bitcoin on an exchange immediately and then send to this exchange. So we can, you can do this right now. It uh, rely on the BTC transmuter, but it's still uh, like in development. Like if people are interested, they can come to the, to the, to the channel, but it's still, uh, you know, UX uh, should be better and more feedback and testing should come. Um, uh, about uh, account, accounting, like in BTC Pay, uh, one thing I was working on uh, quite, uh, quite a while ago was uh, like good reporting. So like you can export all your invoices in like a you know, CSV file and do any kind of operation you need. But, you know, there there is so many different regulation around the world, so many different jurisdictions around the world that at the end of the day, the, 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 the person who has the knowledge of how to report that properly to the tax office is the person concerned, the business owner concerned. So like the only thing that we can do as far as we are concerned is to properly you know, show what is the state of their invoices, what is the state of their wallet, uh, what kind of transaction has been done and like allow them to export this kind of data. And then after it's, it, it's their job basically to, to you know, comply with the local law and like do the proper reporting as they need to. Uh, there, you know, it's like it's like a, a content a, a content issue basically. Right. You see, I mean, I'm. I suggested. Um, I wrote an article. I said, you know, it would be great if we had sort of a guidance team or support team, uh, and you know, who who should be, I think, you know, totally fairly compensated for this kind of service because that's that's going to be like sort of a direct with it be you know face to face you know personal or or online via zoom or whatever but uh, sort of a, a guidance is is really urgently necessary so let's suppose let's just well it's, let's just... it's called it's called it's called a tax accountant basically right right is exactly. their job yeah, but the thing is, I mean, um, uh, there's really hardly you will find hardly a tax expert or tax advisor, for example, in Austria, who is knowledgeable, you know, who who really understands, you know, the the subject matter. So um, you need to yeah. find one. So uh, I think I think so I think yeah. So this is a problem. This comes with some uncertainty, like for the business owner, but. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not a tax accountant, but at the end of the day, if the ta tax people like see that you are taking effort to try to report and open your data as much as possible for them to understand if you pay too much on or um, too much, they won't tell you, but too little, then uh, there is no reason why they will punish you for this. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's true that it demands like some kind of risk taking and some kind of. Uh, of uh, initiative from the business owner, but like in general, if you're a business owner, you are kind of used to that to a certain extent. Right. So when merchants have questions, I mean, do they do? I mean, uh, can I ask you like demographically, where are where where are most of the merchants that use BTP server as a as a alternative transactional infrastructure? You know, like. Yeah. That, that's a good question. I have no idea because we basically we we have no no way of knowing who run BTCP server. So like we have the this chat room that is well like I don't know one thousand two thousand people there uh, asking questions here and there. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I I don't really know. We right. have we have a list somewhere like uh, the BT, we have the BTCP directory dot org. Uh, no, I think directory dot BTCP server dot org. I think where we we. We list uh, stores that want to be listed uh, as users of PTC Pay, so we can take a look there. But like, there is many more, and like, we don't, I, I, we don't know who exactly. Okay, so I, I assume um, all or most of these merchants who use BTP Silver, I, would you consider them more sort of intermediate or experts? Uh, they already have, you know, their full full node running. They know how how the stuff works. They're a little more well, like above average. Yes and no. Um, so some of them are very beginner, but that they they know everybody can learn on on the process. But one thing to note is that 
like uh, the alternative is basically centralized payment processor, right? And centralized payment processor, why they make this chat conversion a little bit simpler in the, from accounting perspective, there is other kind of headache that come that might be even worse than, than this technical barrier. And this kind of problem is what happens is like a customer is paying you with some coin that the, the centralized exchange say, oh, it's suspicious, then confiscate the coin. Then as a merchant, you, you, you are on the middle basically, like you got your customer that paid you, you didn't get the money, but uh, the customer is asking you a refund. But no refund can be made because of regulation, the intermediary cannot send you back the money until this customer make KYC. And uh, depending on the customer situation, then basically it's, it's with the merchant that will have to foot the bill, basically. So are you saying that so, coin joint, like, are you talking like about also like not really like suspicious, but also like coin joint, uh, like coin mixed uh, uh, Bitcoins? Uh, yeah, and you, like, like really we don't really know like what can flag a coin as suspicious. There is no way of knowing. So like it's really a gamble, you know, like maybe it's a coin that come from a coin join. Maybe it's a, it's a, uh, there has been a coin join like three steps ago before the person sent it to a merchant. So even if the person didn't use the mixer, the fact that you receive money from somebody that used the mixer might paint this coin. So like this become more and more like restrictive. And at the end of the day, the people that are, that, that, that here discussed uh, is a merchant because you need to answer to the customer, you need to debug the situation with BitPay. And so even, even if by using BTC Pay there is some kind of technical step, there is some kind of discovery as well with your local jurisdiction and how, how everything works. At the end of the day, you receive the money and like if the customer asks you a refund, you can do the refund. So it's a, it's a, it's as a business owner, I think I prefer dealing with a technical problem than dealing with a compliance issue because the problem with compliance is that there is nothing you can do. Like it's out of your hand. At least technical problem, you can come to the chat, ask people, and even if it takes you time, eventually you will get your money. So yeah. Right. It's, so it's, it's basically what, what is about Bitcoin, you know, like Bitcoin is self sovereignty and it means exactly. that the problem you always have the power to fix the problem by yourself. You don't have to rely on somebody else. And uh, I think it's, it's, very, it's very important even for business owner because like, like I said, like if the BitPay confiscates the money of your, of your customer, like you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on the, what's it called, P2EP, uh, pay to endpoint or some, a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, so um, pay to endpoint is, um, is a new feature for merchants uh, that allow them to mix their coin with the one of their customer. So basically when, uh, when, uh, when a customer is trying to pay, normally he's, he's taking his coins, putting them into a transaction, signs a transaction and broadcast to the network. And like Spice and a uh, blockchain analysis company, when they see this, they say, okay, it's one transaction, one person sent to another person, and they say, okay, it's uh, all those coins that were signed belong to the same person. And the fact that uh, PayJoin exists, even, even if nobody use it, like it put a doubt on it. So basically what happened with PayJoin when a customer is paying, uh, it's completely hidden in the UX, but when the customer paying is like making a transaction as he was paying normally, then send this transaction to the merchants, the merchant had his own input inside the transaction and send it back to sign to the, to the sender. So basically like in one payment, you have like a coin gen happening. But the interesting thing is that on the network, this does not appear as a coin join. So like it means that any normal transaction become a suspicious coin join basically. Right. So the only way to, fr to fight against this kind of, uh, of painting uh, company is basically to include lots of doubts on their analysis. Mm -hmm. Like they cannot rely on uh, lots of things uh, because like even if they, they try to rely on it and try to defend it in front of a judge, at the end of the day, like if you say 
okay, you, 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 you took this assumption, but this assumption can be broken by somebody that know, then whatever their conclusion, it won't hold up. So, uh, uh, is that only possible the, with the lightning, with a lightning transaction, or is that also like, um, or no, no, it's, what, a, it's a Bitcoin transaction. Okay. Just a normal Bitcoin transaction. Like, what, like, like what would be the difference if, if I paid, uh, you know, as a customer, uh, out directly out of my samurai whirlpool, uh, uh so it, it's the same problem. Basically, if you, if you pay with any wallets that doesn't support pay join, uh, basically what will happen is. The chain analysis company, when they see the transaction, so there is two kind of of ways. So there is one way where sometimes the, the analysis company see that the transaction is a coin join. So this is bad because it means that your coin can can be, can get uh, taken, but they, they uh, can get, can get freezed. And there is a case where um, so. Um, so for example, if you send from Wasapi wallets. You can have this kind of problem if you don't pay attention because like the coin can directly through uh, like a coin join of Wasabi. So this is typically a problem. Uh, like Samurai Wallet, I don't use them that much, but for as I understand, they have like a, a kind of ricochet kind of thing. If I understand, it's like- Yeah, Kahoot or ricochet, between. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not even familiar with all those uh, different terminologies. There is uh, Stowall, uh, Stowall 2X, uh, Kahoot, and Ricochet, but I don't know the differences. So maybe you could elaborate on those. Yeah. So so basically, Ricochet, like there is, a, I think there is, they make several steps uh, between the payer and the payee. So mm -hmm. it's improving a little bit. Uh, I don't know about their Stonewall pro protocol. I'm not looking too much into it. My, my main complaint about Wasabi, uh, no, not Wasabi, uh, about uh, Samurai Wallet is that if Samurai Wallet is obliged by governments or, or bas basically turn malicious, uh, they can spy on everybody that use them. So when you use Samurai Wallet, they know your address. Samurai Wallet server know your address. There is a way to prevent this, but by default, when you do this, they know all your address. And so you rely on them on being, uh, on being honest. And I think it's a bad idea. Uh, Wasabi Wallet, on the contrary, don't have this problem, typically. Even, even, if I, even if I use my own, you know, dojo note, my own node and uh, via if tour. If you use your own dojo node, it's fine. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, node, yeah, fine, yeah, because yeah, it's connected to dojo, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but Wasabi, like by default, basically you send nothing to their server. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, I mean, can I, I can only talk about stuff that I use myself. Like if I, if I get my, for example, just, you know, for the, for the first case, uh, you know, help my girlfriend set up this uh, Casa 2 hardware, which she has, which she hasn't, uh, you know, put into operation yet. So, and I turn it into a my node with that BTC pay server button app, which I could activate. Uh, let's say I can, you know, I can help her set it all up and up and running. Could, could then, you know, could she or could we contact you guys and you could like guide her through, you know, additional processes like, Technical well, issues. We have, we have this, uh, basically we have this chat, like chat the BTCP server .org, where all the communities are going around. Uh, we have also like uh, tons of video on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. So like most of the problems she might face, face like, and we have a very good documentation. So any problem she will face, like they, she will find the questions, uh, the reply to, to her question. After um, like, one thing that you can do, like if you are more motivated than her, for example, for learning about Bitcoin and you are, I guess, with this podcast, is simply like taking care of it for her. Like uh, no you choice. can negotiate something, you know, like, uh, like a, I don't know, a good restaurant every month or something like this. But um, like the idea is that even if she don't know how to deal with it, if you know how to do it, then you can do it for her. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's still better than her just relying on like some party that, on which she has no, no leverage. Right. Well, wow, fascinating. So, uh, Nicole, so how, what about the interoperability? I mean, um, what kind of wallets can I connect through or via BTP pay server? I mean, 
uh, because I'm really looking forward so for the we... strike thing uh, that's uh, allegedly going to come to European Union and Europe in the near future. The Rockstar developer told hmm. me. So, you know, for the customers uh, would be great. So... So basically, the, what we support in BTC Pay is uh, we have hard wallet support. So basically, like we, we support a bunch of main like Trezor, uh, Ledger, like all the main one, you know, like uh, Bitbox, Cold Call, like all the main one. We support them. Uh, the process is really we have a, a local app that you need to run though on your computer. But like you run this app, you go on your BTC Pay instance. You say, okay, I want to pair my my store with a hardware wallet plug your wallet you confirm on your wallet and that's done basically then directly from the btc Pay server website you can sign your transaction broadcast them you and it's important also you don't have to rely on the server of the hardware wallet company so even if the hardware company go down or or like uh, even if they are being spied by the msa or whatever like they cannot get any data of you because it's always passing by your own node on, mm -hmm. on server so yeah, you, you can use this or, or like uh, we also have like hot wallet support. So you can just use BTC. Like if you don't have lots of stock, you know, like uh, if you don't keep lots of money on the server, you can just say, okay, I will keep it on a hot wallet. On the server, for example, if you want page on, you need, you need this, you need a hot wallet. Um, okay. okay. Which kind of yeah. what wallets? Or, uh, or can you talk about like the lightning wallets? What kind of lightning wallets are supported? And interoperable? Uh, no, hot wallet. No, no, I, I say hot wallets. Okay, uh, okay. So okay. basically, mm -hmm. BTC Pay itself is a wallet, basically. Right. BTC Pay itself is a wallet. Um, yeah, so you can use whatever you want. There is always also, like, if you use Wasabi wallet, there is a way to export the data that you need to enter to receive your money directly on your Wasabi wallet. Like, uh, it's kind of very standardized stuff. So, like, I think the sky is the limit here. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, how do you, uh, how would you pitch BTP, BTC pay server to the merchants? How would you pitch it? I mean, with what kind of, what uh, are the advantages? I mean, features. Well, uh, we, uh, we, I got, uh, I got, um, I got the opportunity long time, uh, not long time ago, like where it was Pine64, uh, they are a maker of like Rock64 devices or stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And basically, initially, they wanted to go to BitPay, and the community raised a bit against it, so they backed up their plan. And they, uh, I contacted them to say, oh, "If you want, you can try BTC Pay, and I can help you setting it up and everything." Because it's a very great company. I'm using their device. I love what they do. So I, I, if I have to spend time to help them, I will do it. And uh, basically, the way I try to sell them, so. Their main problem, as you said, is always fiat. You know, like, how do we get the fiat in our, in our account? So we we said what I told you, like we have this BTC transmitter things. There is some, uh, so there is some limit, limitation, like one of the limitation, but you also have it with a central, centrally, centralized uh, payment processor is that when you receive the money, the, the USD is on your exchange account, not on your bank account. So you need to you know, withdraw them. You know, the, you have this kind of problem coming up. And, uh, but I think the main points that sell them a, a lot is uh, it, it will run on your own, uh, you know, infrastructure. So uh, for, for Pine64, it's very important because basically it can run on their small device that they make. It's kind of a Raspberry Pi device. And it's a uh, BTC Pay work great right on this. So like, it's a great way for them to, 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 to use it. Uh, and uh, the nice thing is, I think, I think the main point I always tell them is that, okay, if you use BitPay, of course, it will be simpler to get the fiat if it works. So depending on your jurisdiction, it's maybe not even possible, you know, like they don't serve everywhere in the world. If you are in the US, it's a lot, but if you are, I don't know, in whatever else country, then that might not work. And I say, okay, what, what happened? And it happened often, like what happened if the customer send you the money BitPay find it suspicious, they freeze the money, and your customer don't have the, your product, you don't have the money, and BitPay is on the middle. What do you do? And uh, like, so this, like, when it happens, like, you, you feel like completely powerless. There is nothing you can do. You, you won't like 
you know, hire a lawyer to get your money to bill pay because anyway, it's like for 50 bucks. So what are you going to do? So I think it's a very big point for them. Like by using BTC Pay, you know that nobody is taking your money. Like it goes to your pocket and then you go to the exchange. So it's, it's less support for them. Actually, it's less support to host their own than to use a centralized service. So I think mm. it's a big selling point. What about lightning transactions, lightning payments? How do you, how do you integrate that with BTP, BTC Pay? So lightning, lightning Network, we also integrate it. So, um, so Lightning Network works great. You can just accept payment with Lightning, but the main, for, for new merchants, I don't advise it immediately because except if you are in the Bitcoin community, you know what it is, then there is no problem. But like if you are a merchant, then you need to, it's like Bitcoin, you know, where you, you cannot go from fiat to Bitcoin without expecting some kind of learning curve. And those merchants that are interested into bit, coming into Bitcoin, they still not have passed the first learning curve to learn about Bitcoin. So until they learn about Bitcoin, it's useless to talk to them about Lightning Network because like they, it's too much information at once. And obstacles. And, uh, and are, um, are there too many obstacles? Or? Yeah. It's not obstacle, but it's just like, you, a person can learn new stuff uh, like at a certain rate and you should not try to push too much information at once or else they will become like frozen and not take any step. So like that's why for new merchants, like I wait that they know about what is Bitcoin, that they're comfortable about receiving Bitcoin and then they can accept Lightning Network and like learn about Lightning Network. But without them understanding this first step, like it's, it's, quite, it's useless to start talking about Lightning Network. They need to know about Bitcoin before Lightning Network. Mm -hmm. And I know that some people are expecting that in the future you can use Lightning Network without knowing about Bitcoin. I think it's a bit uh, hopeful. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too much, uh, I, don't, I don't really much agree with it. But at the end of the day, I think that Bitcoin knowledge will become more, uh, more spread out in society. You know, like kids that are that right now 11 years old are born with Bitcoin, basically. So I, I, I don't expect, you know, this higher le learning curve to, to, to stay for, for long. So you have two ways. You, you have like products that become less hackish, that are easier to, to use. And there is like people that become more educated with time. So um, eventually it will come, but people mm. need to learn first. And I, we are, I think with Lightning especially, I think we are at this point where the technology evolves faster than people can follow. So even me, sometimes like, there is new stuff with Lightning. I, I have no clue what it is. <laughs> really? Do you have the impression it's like evolving, developing so fast? I mean, beyond yes. expectation? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Even, even me, like what they are doing with Lightning, I'm not following any, anymore. So like... As far as I'm concerned with Lightning, I can connect to a peer, open a channel and send money and receive money. That's all I, 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 I know. And like, I know that if you know about Lightning, you can do lots of different stuff like message or like WebLN or whatever, lots of different things. But at the end of the day, like for me, it's going too fast. Uh, I, I just don't follow. I, I, th I think we are at this stage where real people need to use it and there is not too much to improve to the technology until we get more people uh, knowing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Um, you see, I mean, it's about the satisfaction of the needs, of the real needs of the merchant and the, the customer. So what the merchant wants, uh, especially my, you know, in my girlfriend's case, she has a, she has a shop. I mean, she has a grow shop. It's everything is legal. It's just, you know, they, but the customers, they usually pay in cash. So can we talk a little bit about privacy and anonymity? How would you, how would you explain that to the merchant and the customer? Like the, the, the payment that the customer would do, whatever, let's just say in a normal Bitcoin online transaction, is that, that how, like compared to a cash, to a fiat cash, Payment. So how would you is it is it is it a retail shop or what what do they do they send the cash by mail uh, no 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 just you know in person but they you know they pay in cash like in paper oh. fiat cash but oh. but what would be the equivalent so what, you know like <laughs> yeah so i think i think that cash for a person to person local 
exchanges, I think it will stay like way far ahead of any technology that we can throw at it. Like, I think even like centralized payment technology are not as user friendly as cash. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, if you're a merchant, you will say, okay, yeah, it's more easy for me to accept a payment from somebody that's used like a, you know, tap, tap payment. But like as a user, like you need to set up this tap, uh, you know, this tap payment. And like, for example, if you're a tourist, you cannot even open an account to get this kind of card. So, uh, for example, you got the story. Uh, uh, it was, uh, wait, it was, uh, I, I don't remember the link, but it was one guy that was going to China, Shenzhen, and um, basically just wanted to buy something at Starbucks or something like this. And uh, they will not accept cash, but he had no other way to pay because he's a tourist. So, like, he don't have phone, he don't have, like, tap, he don't have any other way. So, the only way he could find is to convince another, convince another customer to take his cash, <laughs> then they will pay with their card. But like, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is money laundering for, 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 the, for, for, for the government, you know, like, well, well, he's a money transmitter, we don't know. Right. So and like, I, I think that- Coffee is a drug, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a drug. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, like, like for, I understand that merchant, this type of payment is easier, but like for the user, like it's not easier. Like, okay, if the user managed to set it up and took the time and like he's living locally, you know, and okay, maybe, but it's not always the case. So I think, I think cash, like, you know, it just work. Uh, no, mm. no need of battery, no need of those external server. And yeah, and it's, and, yeah, and you have the full privacy, or actually anonymity. That's, that's the issue that, you know, customers, they just want to pay cash, most of them, you know? So how do you, I mean, I'm sure the, do you think we're, we're close to that? I mean, are we going to have a sort of a, um, whatever that is, a, a lightning payment that, that is fully well, So li lightning payment might have a chance. So mm -hmm. the, my, the main use case I can see on uh, on Lightning payment being becoming better than tap tap payments is what I just said. Like there's lots of people that cannot use tap payment for lots of reasons. So like they are tourists, they don't have access to banking because of what not. You know, like I, I'm living in Japan. Like opening a bank account was very complicated. You need to mm -hmm. check lots of boxes to open a bank account. If you don't have job, you don't have bank account basically. So how do you live in this case? So I think that in those situations, like for example, touristic area where you have lots of, you know, uh, foreigners that are coming, they don't have tap payment and you want a fast way, uh, like tap payments to pay, then I think lightning payment can play a role. Uh, but I, don't, I still think that cash is here to stay for long because it's so easy to use, uh, but, on the other hand, you know, all the government is like trying to kill cash. Yeah. What if they ban, you know, you know for with a good excuse, whatever uh, virus uh, well, <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, and if they ban it, basically Bitcoin becomes the most easiest things to use for any people that was using cash before. So Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As so we say it's good for Bitcoin. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so. You know what we want to do? I mean, I mean, you, you're totally right. I'm, 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 I'm totally on. You know, we're on the same page. I mean, when it comes to education, learning curve, we have a long way to go. But still, I, I, what I'm, what we want to do also, maybe uh, under the sort of guidance of Bitcoin Austria, and it's a nonprofit organization. So we want to do sort of general educational uh, information workshops or events, and you know, just explain them the fundamentals, you know, of money and you know the technical possibilities and 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 a little bit of Austrian economics maybe and uh, you know give give people the chance at least to to dive into that rabbit hole but also uh, take the initiative and start you know uh, it doesn't have to be a full note but at least start you know uh, operating a hardware wallet or you know a semi-custodial or non-custodial uh, lightning wallet and then and then go fully to a to a full note sometime, and then use use it you know in interaction with the merchants. So it's a gradual process, I know, but this is why I wanted to talk to you. Like, what a what would be you know um, 
alternatives or or, or opportunities or or co uh, you know potential for cooperation with 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 people who use BTC Pay Server, who are experienced, who are maybe team members of your of your BTC Pay Server team, so we can you know somehow bring in a little bit more structure, like support structure into this whole thing. Well, the, for the really new people coming in the in the in the space, I think that as you said, like BTC Pay Server is still like too far ahead the curve, like. Mm -hmm. They still need first, you know, to to understand how to use Bitcoin, like how to use a hardware wallet, uh, how to if they want to use an exchange, how to use an exchange, like uh, how to buy from merchants. So there is lots of merchants accepting Bitcoin. Like it's easier to use Bitcoin than to use credit card uh, in a lots of place. So I, I'm living in Japan. I got a shitty debit card and I cannot get the credit card for like four years because I don't check some case some cases that you don't even know. Uh, so basically like when I'm using my card, it's often rejected. So like I just pay in Bitcoin and like, I, I think it's way easier than uh, for, for online, for online payment. I think Bitcoin is the easiest thing ever, like way easier than PayPal, way easier than, uh, than, um, than, uh, credit card. Is and it instantaneous? Is it instantaneous, Nicola? Like, like you, when you do like you do a normal online transaction, like do the merchant like does the merchant wait for confirmation? How 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 do you, how do, how's the process? Like how? Do... Well, like, like uh, so most of the time it's like online shop. So online shop don't really care about if the transaction takes too long. You know, like mm -hmm. they, if it takes like one or two days and it doesn't confirm, like maybe they might send a message to the customer. If it's small amount, most of the time they will say, okay, I take the risk if something bad happened. You know, even with credit card, it happened, you know, you have like chargeback. Uh, so, and if you are a merchant, like even if a transaction is stuck, you have way to unstuck it with Bitcoin. Like uh, for example, by paying more fees, you send to yourself that I pay more fees. So you increase the chance of the whole chain of being confirmed. So like like there is not too much problem about this uh for and for a retail commerce like when you pay in bitcoin like same thing they want to ask the customer to you know if you order a beer they want us to the customer to wait for a confirmation before they deliver the beer you, know, you, you have a certain kind of risk that you are willing to take when you're a business owner you you take risk you know you're so it's it's not a big deal it's not a big like Lightning is a bit better in this sense because Lightning Network is like instantaneous and you know it cannot be reverted. But uh, at this stage, it's still like very small, uh, mm -hmm. small community. So, but in Japan, it seems to be the norm. I mean, uh, you know, compared to other countries, like it's more acceptable. In, so to... no, so Japan, so Japan was very promising, but like the the regulation have gone crazy basically. If you say save some of your Bitcoin there, like so that's why on my side I only buy and never sell. But like if you sell your Bitcoin for calculating the profit on which you are taxed, basically they need to know all your holdings from the beginning of time of Bitcoin. So like even if somebody like send you a donation for one coffee uh, on your website, then you need to declare that and like uh, wow. calculate the 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 average. How do they call that? The uh, the average. Basically, the average price of your holding when you bought and oh. remove when you sell. Basically, it's very difficult calculation. There is oh no fucking God. way anybody know to do this. Um, unbelievable. And like it happened even if you go from crypto to crypto. So like if you sell Bitcoin to take Litecoin, for example, it's a taxable event. You need to say, okay, I sold Bitcoin, That's I pay crazy. my taxes, then I buy Litecoin. So like at the end of the day, like people don't bother anymore. Like you know, they, they, mm. they just, on my side, I just buy. I don't sell. And uh, one day, if regulation become better, maybe I will sell. But until until it doesn't, it's not simple, and they don't require me to tell the when exactly I got the money of every coffee donation I got since the beginning of time of Bitcoin. Then I, I will not sell anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. Um... So Nico, it was a great talk. I really enjoyed that talk. So do you have any like uh, a roadmap? Is there a roadmap for BTC? So do you have like a vision? Where do you see Bit Bit Bitcoin going in the next, yeah. uh, until the next halving? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I don't see that for. 
So in, in general, like uh, the, we don't plan too much ahead, maybe maximum one, two months ahead, but like you know, it's pretty much day by day. Like this day I was being focused at improving the privacy of the wallet of BTC Pay server. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm, I, I, in the next version of BTC, BTC Pay server, there will be a fingerprint randomization. So when you do a transaction, uh, Chennai's company can know which wallet it comes from because there is some particularity inside the transaction that give this information away. And uh, I think the best idea to, to prevent this type of stuff is to randomize this kind of generate uh, this kind of data. So next release of BTC Pay, you will have like lots of impro privacy improvements. Uh, there will be the so for those that follow the pay join. Uh, proposal I made, like there, there is new feature I added uh, and that I implemented in the new one. Um, what else? I, I, I think soon there will be RBF support inside the BTC Pay wallet. So you what can is that? The fees easily. What is RBF? RBF. So what? RBF is like, imagine you send a transaction and this transaction starts because it, may, it doesn't get confirmed. Mm -hmm. You can say, okay, I pay a little bit more fees mm -hmm. to make it quicker. So like basically you can fix the situation. As a, as a sender, you can fix the situation. Um, there is also the concept that we, we, we are developing. Uh, it will take some time. Uh, it's called the uh, uh, pool payments. Mm -hmm. So take an example. Uh, if you used already like some website, like a uh, freelance website, uh, the, the UX is very great. Basically, as a, as a, as a, post, you go on this website, you put your uh, de debit card number or your credit card number and you say, okay, I employ this person and this person can pull the money no more, uh, like no more than 1,000 per week, for example, 1,000 USD per week. And basically the freelance does his work and when the freelance does his work and report his time, basically it pulls the money directly to him. So uh, this kind of concept, I think is missing with Bitcoin. So I will add it. So the idea is really the same. Like you can say, tell to somebody, okay, you, you can pull the money whenever you want from this, from this pull, re pull, pull payment request and, you know, and, 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 you know, put your wallet or whatever, on which, or, or you want to receive it. So we will add this and this also, this, is, this will also nicely match with the concept of uh, merchant refunds. So right now when merchants want to refund, there is a four step process. Basically the customers say, oh, I want a refund. The merchants say, okay, I will do the refund. Can you give me your address? Uh, how do you want to get refund? Then the customers send back the address. Then the merchants send back, oh, it will be at this price. Is it okay? So like there is lots of back and forth between the merchant and the, and the, and the customer. And with the concept of refund in BTC Pay Server, and it relies on this concept of full payment. The idea is that the customer say, I want a refund. The merchant say, okay. And he will just share a link with, the, with his customer and say, okay, go to this link. And the customer can directly go and say, okay, I want to take this money here, my address and say, okay, I do it. I ask a refund now. And, um, and then the, the merchant later, maybe at the end of the day, or maybe automatically, he will review all the refund that he own and then validate them and send everything. And um, it's a bit more advanced, but like for merchants that also accept pay join, we will bundle those refunds inside the, inside the pay join transaction. So like if another customer pay you, then the merchant can bundle his payment in the same transaction. So basically this transaction become a three person, like three person or more coin join in the making mm. so like it's, it's very good from privacy wise and it's also very good for for the merchants because it saves fees like when you bundle lots of transactions in a single transaction uh, lots of send in a single transaction you save lots of fees so uh, so yeah it will be you know this kind of puzzle is coming together but we we need to find the right user in, in, interface to communicate that to the users and there will be also a new uh, notification system as well, like like where you, know, you open your BTC Pay server, you have like Twitter or Facebook, like, you know, like you have three notification, you receive money, uh, 
oh, this that's kind great. of notification. That's awesome. Yes. So that these are all going to be implemented in the new future or? Um... Yes, yes. So uh, my hope, uh, I would say it's always in two weeks, but my hope, is hopefully in one or two months, maybe. So uh, yeah, it's uh, in the short term, it's what uh, what we are focusing on. This is awesome. So Nico, you see, um, I mean, this is my position. I think um, one of the essential keys to uh, monetary evolution or Bitcoin's adoption or critical adoption rate are the merchants. I think this is the merchants are the key. And let's just hypothesize, let's just, you know, theoretically, let's just say a critical number of merchants, they get it. Let's say they really learn, educate themselves, you know, or we help them or whatever, and they get, you know, their full infra infrastructure as an alternative payment option, you know, for their customers, you know, by giving them even, you know, uh, incentive, uh, discount, whatever, in order to pay, you know, with whatever online lightning. But could you see that? I mean, do you, do you see that kind of future where a critical number of merchants adopt Bitcoin by really integrating everything, you know, they figure out something, you know, with their accounting system, the, the tax situation. Do you see like, this accelerating this process of as of critical adoption well i think i think we are all, I, I don't know because on my side most of the thing i i want to buy i can buy it on bitcoin so like uh, for example uh, if you use amazon like you can buy gift card quite easily yeah. using bitcoin so like if you can buy with amazon on, with bitcoin like what do you need more like you can just live from bitcoin uh, I think maybe one way for merchant to solve the situation tax wise, and maybe it's a thing that we might think with, uh, with BTC Pay in the future, but like we, we not sure how yet, is a concept of gift card. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're a merchant, you can mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm a merchant, I'm doing gift card. And then somebody is selling it in Bitcoin. So like for accounting wise, it's very well regulated. They know what to do, but like they, they by, by merchant, by making gift card, they basically outsource uh, those kind of problems to other peoples that might live in other jurisdictions. So it's, uh, I think it, it might be interesting uh, development. Maybe not for tomorrow, but things to think about. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, Nicola, do you see any other, like, any other final thoughts or, or, or vision or, or, I don't know, you want to direct your, uh, my listeners to, to any resources that are important to study, watch, listen to, whatever? Well, like, uh, what else? Uh, things that pass in top of my mind, like, if you have time to read books, I advise you to read uh, The um, Sovereign Individual. I think that will uh, maybe uh, motivate you a little bit. Um, and yeah, like I, yeah, don't try, don't try to push too hard Bitcoin to people that are either not interested or not, you know, there, there is some kind, there is some people that you, you understand that they, they don't get it. So mm -hmm. those, those people, you should not try too much. Uh, normally people who get it will try to catch the information uh, you know, as much as they can by themselves. And it's better, I think, to, to let them come than chasing them. Uh, at least that was my experience. So with your podcast, at least you can like, you know, people that got interested will come to you and it's, it's quite good, I think. Awesome. So uh, people can find you on Twitter and BTC Pay Server. You're Nicola under Nicola Dorier yep. and BTC yep. Pay Server. And what's what's the BTC Pay Merchant Association? What what is what is that specifically? I, mean... <laughs> I don't really know actually. <laughs> so it's a, it's a not a, it's not managed by us. Uh, okay, gotcha. I don't I don't really know. I, I guess it's like uh, some uh, lots of BTC Pay merchants that are coming together, but I don't really know what they are doing. So <laughs> yeah. Now I'm re I'm really fascinated by by you know this open source projects you guys are working on. So much commitment and work and ethos. You know. Uh, pouring into this project is really really awesome i mean uh, the speed you well, know, like, development like we, is amazing <laughs> yeah and like we got lots of well we, we got also lots of support like uh, like from uh, square crypto btsc digilab i think luna node wallet of satoshi so like there is lots of people like sending us uh and uh, we, we also have new people to announce soon i won't tell you now uh, which one now but uh we we, we are lucky to be one of the, these two open source projects that get some funding. And so 
great. some people so on my side i'm happy because digilab let me work on btc pay you know as an employee so i don't have i never had any problem with money but like for for other contributors that was not the case and now basically they can live full time working on btc pay thanks to this money so it's why actually it's accelerating and i hope i'm not too much a bottleneck for others because i need to review pull requests but uh, yeah it's, <laughs> it's accelerating right <laughs> Really enjoyed our talk, uh, Nicola. I hope we can repeat this, and maybe even um, uh, in the you know in the framework of a panel discussion. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for your time, and uh, talk to you soon. All right, take good care. Bye, Nicola. Hey, so what do you guys think? Let me know your questions, your feedback, your comments. Uh, let me know, you know, wh where do you see this going? Um, I really enjoyed this talk with Nicola Dorier. Amazing talk. Um, I hope you, you will share this uh, podcast or YouTube version, whatever, with your friends, neighbors, colleagues, corporation partners, merchants, for example, most of all. And yeah, I see really, I see the, the transition to a monetary, you know, uh, evolution by, you know, uh, uh, by, by merchants adopting Bitcoin and the whole, you know, infrastructure, by educating themselves, getting more efficient, focused help, guidance, support, uh, whether it be, you know, uh, users themselves who, who know a little bit more than, than the merchant. And it's imp really important that we, you know, go on this progression level from, from a user, from whatever, buying a little bit of Bitcoin, getting a hardware wallet, uh, setting up a full, full node, connecting your your, you know, your different wallets, whether it be Harry Wallets, Lightning, to your own node, whether it be Samurai Mobile Wallet with your integrated Whirlpool, which is, you know, really user friendly now, you know. So, so yeah, this is this is the path to go. Um, make sure you follow Nicola Dorier on Twitter and BTC Pay Server. I'm going to put those in the show notes, and yeah, give it a like, retweet, share, please. And follow me, follow me uh, everywhere on all platforms. Subscribe on my YouTube channel, please. It would help me enormously. And hope to, you know, interact soon with you, very soon. And let me know your questions. My email address is hello at thetotalconnector.com. My email address and my website is thetotalconnector.com. Or if you want to listen to the podcast directly on my website, it's kevandavani.com slash podcast. Otherwise, you can find me on every social media platform, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, what have you. So thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.